you would have heard of the Oscar-nominated film Lion. Five-year-old Indian boy named Saru. He was picked up by a stranger sent to a life in Australia. A child goes missing every eight minutes in India. I was a child that was accidentally lost. I really hope that my sister's still alive, that my mum's okay. His memory was scattered with unforgettable images of another family, another mother. Reliving India as a child. If I lost it, then I would have lost my identity. Because I know that I'm not going to find my family again. I came across Google Earth. How can I use these images in my memory to get myself back to my family? I think he had an earthly chance. Saru was looking for a one-room hut in a country spanning three million square kilometres. It's a big place. He was so little. Friends are saying, you're never going to find it. Please, God, let me see my family again. You don't even know the name of the town you're from. It clearly is, like finding a needle in a haystack. It's a chance once in a billion, a million, an infinity. Do you recall what happened that day you were lost? And I saw this little silhouette of my older brother going around the side and I chased after him and I said, hang on a minute, can I come with you please? I started following him and he said, no, go back. And I said, no, 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 I want to go with you, I'm not going back. So he said, all right, come with me. And we rode a little BMX down to the local train station. We got there about nine and I was quite tired and sort of weary and, and sleepy. I was, I'm only sort of five years of age and, and it's past my bedtime. And so I grabbed my brother's hand and we stepped off the train and onto the, the station platform and I saw a chair in front of me and so I pulled my brother towards it and I sat down and my brother said, stay here for a minute, I'll come back to get you. I'm not too sure if I was asleep for about half an hour or two hours or three hours, but when I woke up my brother was nowhere to be seen. And so I stood up, looking to the left, looking to the right, there's a, a train in front of me there at the station. Whether it's the same one that I came on or a different one, I'm not too sure. And so I boarded the carriage from the platform, thinking that it was in, in the carriage. So you fell into a fitful sleep, thinking that when you woke up, you might be home or you'd see your brother again. When you did wake up, where were you? Well, I don't know where I was. This, I, was I knew I was on a train There was a, hurling on the, the railway with uh, a scenery out the window that really resembled nothing that I really knew. And uh, it, was, it was such a panic um, because I ran up and down and my heart was just going triple time. It was just so, I was so scared. This is just uh, a, a runaway train going to somewhere that I've, I don't know. And that's the last memory I've got. Of him. Is that a tough one? Yeah, it is, a, it is a tough one. Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard for me because, uh, you know, I loved the whole of my family, but he, I was just so close to my brother. Saru's eldest brother, Guru, was his idol and the closest he had to a father. He always held my hand when I walked with him. I sort of, you know, put my head up and looked up at him whilst we were walking and it was just a big smile. It was almost like security and, and I'm safe and, and I'm with him. Five-year-old Saru couldn't know that the train would take him nearly 2,000 kilometres across India to one of the most populated and unforgiving cities on earth. But when you arrive in Calcutta, there's a sea of people trying to get on the train. I was so scared. You know, it was uh, such an alienating place. Uh, I've never been here before. So many people, and all I wanted was my brother and my mother. Everyone was shoving and pulling, and I was just a tiny little boy. I just cried and, uh, and cried and, and called out to my brother, but, you know, he was, he was never there. So I know that I'm not going to find my family again. Saru would find a family of sorts in this tiny orphanage. Out of all of those children, do you remember Saru? I do, because <laughs> I spent a lot of time with them. 
The Indian government declared me a lost child of India. I was adopted out to Australia to a uh, Australian family. When Saru was first with us though and we'd go out to the, the supermarket or whatever, mm -hmm. it was invariable that Saru would find something on the floor, be it a coin, a hair clip. He'd always come home with a little thing and the kindest little one that he ever gave to me was this beautiful little butterfly. But he said, oh, no, oh, no take, no take. He was worried that I thought he might have. So I said, oh, where'd that come from? And then he pointed to the ground and he picked up this little thing and I never made him feel bad about it because it surely helped him to survive in India. You put up a, a map of India in your house. Why was that important? We had no idea where the boys really came from, but we wanted to show respect to the country. So the map, of course, was an integral part of his bedroom that he came home to. I woke up every morning seeing that map, and hence it sort of kept the memories alive. I really hope that my sister's still alive. I hope that my mum's okay. Is my brother's still there? Is Goodu still there? I wasn't a child that was given away. I was a child that was accidentally lost. What was that moment like, believing in the bottom of your heart that he was hmm. looking for you? Yeah. My brother, I don't think he would have been a guy that would have given up. You know, he, he was... He was just like my mother. <laughs> Did you ever try to put it out of your mind growing up that there was this sister, this brother, this mother that was probably looking for you? No, never. I would have kept that till the day that I died. How did you manage to hold on to those memories? Were you retelling yourself parts of the story to remember as you were growing up? It's mostly visuals because my visuals were heightened right from birth. You know, you're living off your wits and when you sort of live off your wits, You've got to, you know, think spontaneously on the spot and go. If emotions came in, then I think, you know, that's sort of the end of you, the psychological scarring from being on the train and then coming to Calcutta and going through the, the, um, the hardship, then going to sleep as well at night and just reliving what had happened to those uh, times in India as a child. It just sustained within me perpetually because the thing about it is that I held it so tight due to the fact that if I lost it, then I would have lost my identity. And you know, when I go to sleep, I just project to my mother and sister that I'm still alive, I'm still here. And there will be a day, you know, hoping that we will be together again. One of my friends said, oh, you should have a look at this. It's Google Earth. It's amazing. <laughs> but then I just thought, well, I've got such a bank of images and memories. Perhaps I could use this new technology and just, just at least try it. Saru was looking for a one-room hut in a country spanning three million square kilometres. And when you look at India, it's so massive, that's impossible. This is the seventh largest country in the world mm. and you don't even know the name of the town you're from. No. It's madness. It is. <laughs> I have no idea where it is. You've got over a billion people in this mass country with thousands and thousands of train station, thousands of towns as well. Where are you going to start and where are you going to go? Sometimes, you know, you walked away, you went to bed in dismay and thinking perhaps I should listen to my friends. And my friends are saying, what's in the past, in the past, move, move on, go forward. You know, you're never gonna find it. It was a painstaking process of elimination that took Saru down hundreds, thousands of dead ends. And he didn't just spend weeks or months looking. Saru kept up the hunt for six years. There's been many times where I've just walked away in dismay and thought, you know, what am I doing? Each time I get my hopes up, I just get excited and then, you know, they get shattered. I saw my parents the next day and they said, you know, um, we know that you've been searching Saru. And my mum said, wait a second, I'll be back in a second. And she came back over 
and my mum said, here's a little drawing that you draw uh, back when you were five years of age, a map of your hometown. It's got a water tower on the left hand side, a flyover bridge, a ravine further on, and a train station on the right hand side. And that's what I'm looking for in that order. I closed my eyes at that point in time and I said, please God, let me just one last time see my family again. I zoomed down on this train track and scrolled and scrolled and scrolled and I thought, you know, this looks something familiar. And so I, I zoomed in and I saw the water tower and I'm just like, is this a dream? Is this, you know, is my mind playing a game? That was uh, such a pivotal moment in my life. He went into the office one morning and sat down in front of John and said, Dad, I think I've found my home. I think I've found where I've come from. Saru made the potentially heartbreaking journey halfway around the world. The boy inside led him along the old streets of his childhood. I heard people talking to me in my head. Is this the right place? Even though you your legs are taking you on the road that you know you used to walk 25, 26 years ago. I was almost at a point where I, I mean, I said to myself, this isn't the place. Eventually, Saru found where he had once lived. But there was no house, just a pile of rubble. Well, I just, you know, put my hand on my face and just thought, Perhaps the worst is actually what's happened and they're not there anymore. Perhaps my sister's been sold off. Perhaps my brothers are all dead. Perhaps my mother's dead too. But then a stranger recognised Saru's childhood photo. How did you take that news that you, when you heard that Guru had died that day? Hmm. It was the biggest shock that I could have ever had. Was... I sort of found it hard to believe, really. You know, sometimes I think, was it, was it my fault? And then that person said, come with me, I'll take you now to your mother. A few steps covered a lifetime. There, at the end of a lane, after 26 years, Saru's mother, Fatima. You'd found her. It was such a shock. She came forward and, and, and we hugged and, and I think she was in as much, if not more, shock as I was. both looking at each other and I'm in tears and she's in tears and all I could think of is that I've been searching for you for 25 years and I did it because you know the love between me my sister and you was so strong. And it's a miracle that that you didn't come up empty-handed in your search it's a beautiful incredible miracle. We couldn't have been more proud of Saru and the way he undertook his search because the outcome was so wonderful. This is my mother, Kamala. Hey. Kamala, this is Hello. my mother's search. We held each other and I wanted to ask her a couple of things. So I asked the interpreter to say to Kamala, did you always feel that Saru was still alive? And she said, yes. I always knew in my heart that not only was he alive, that he would come back to me one day. That either he would come back to me or I would find him. 
I always knew this in my heart. Because <laughs> even though I, I prayed at night to send the message, I didn't really know. And, you know, for me, that was just the most incredible thing. And I thought, oh my goodness, you know, every night of your life going to sleep in these conditions, trusting that your little boy is still alive. And there I am standing there in the dirt in the street and she's trying to comfort me and wipe away my tears, which, you know, I had the blessing of her son. I had the good life. And then she said to me through the interpreter, you know, don't cry, he's your son, I give you my son. You gotta get to play with both son. He's your son, take good care of him. It's very hard. Very hard, but we're just happy to have the moment that just by miracle this has happened. Who would have ever have thought, you know, from that kid sort of walking through the VIP and meeting his, you know, future family, that um, you know something like this would have come about? You could have been out of this earth and at uh, a very young age. But the heavens, you know, pushed and pulled, and, and this is my destiny. Under the umbrella of hope, there is so much other things underlying. But hope is a, it is a massive, massive one, because, you know, if I didn't have hope of trying to find my family, I, I, don't, think, I don't think I would have ever sort of got to where I am.